Now let's talk about gravitation near Earth's surface. Because let's face it, most of the time when we care about gravity, it's because we're like dropping apples on the planet or something. So let's think of the Earth as a uniform sphere of mass M. Earth. Mass M. Big M. Okay, because it's a, it's a big mass. Okay. And let's say that the magnitude of the gravitational force from Earth on a particle, a mass m, little m, so we're going to have a, another particle near Earth's surface of mass little m, like that, okay? Um, well, I know from last time that the force of gravity between the two should be big G, times mass 1 is big mass, and mass 2 is little mass, divided by the distance between them. Okay, if the particle is released, it will fall toward the center of the Earth. Okay, so it's being pulled down toward the center of the Earth with this Fg. <clears throat> so if you think about it, that particle m, if you look at Newton's second law, Oh, I'm running out of colors. How about green? Well, there's only one force acting on it. So usually we say net force equals mass times acceleration. So for the little particle, the net force is the force of gravity equals its mass is little mass. And this would be the acceleration. Um, we're going to call this the acceleration of gravity, since gravity is the only force acting on it. And then we put in, well, here's the force of gravity right here. So what we've really got is big G, big M, little m, over r squared equals little m times the acceleration of gravity. Well, look, the little m's cancel. So really what we're saying is the acceleration of gravity is big G, big M, over r squared. Okay, so this is the acceleration of gravity. Now, if we put in the numbers for Earth, so I, I get the mass of Earth and the radius of the Earth. Now, keep in mind, this r is supposed to be the distance between their centers, but that distance really, eh, if this is the center of the Earth, Really, that distance is just the radius of the Earth. If we're near Earth's surface, then the radius of the Earth is just the distance between the two objects. So if we put in the radius of the Earth and everything, then at sea level, what we get, and this is kind of weird, so it, at sea level, and we're just going to stick with that, the acceleration due to gravity near the Earth's surface ends up being a about 9.83 meters per second squared. Now you might be thinking, well that doesn't sound right. We've been using g, little g, as 9.8 or 9.81, not 9.83. So what, what's going on here? What's with this 3? Well, this is just the acceleration due to gravity. It is not the acceleration near the Earth's surface because there's actually something else going on. It's actually several other things going on. First off, Earth's mass is not evenly distributed, so we can't actually say that we can pretend all of this M is at the very center. It causes all kinds of weird problems. Next thing is, Earth's not really a sphere. Earth's actually, um, they call it an oblate spheroid. I'm going to totally exaggerate this, okay, but it's, it's more like Eh, that, that still doesn't look good. Where it, it it's fatter crosswise along the equator than it is crosswise from north to south pole. And that's going to mess up gravity a little bit. But the most important part, the part that makes the largest difference, is the fact that the Earth spins. So if this is the axis it's spinning like this. When something spins, you need a centripetal force to keep it 
going in a circle. So if you have something on the surface, um, and now I'm gonna, it's gonna look a little funny, sorry. Um, if we look at this, we're, like, this is the North Pole. So, <clears throat> if I put an object out here, just put some box of mass M out here, okay? So it's spinning, so it's like going around and around like this. It needs some centripetal force pointed in, which means it has some sort of centripetal acceleration that needs to be accelerating toward the middle. Turns out that some of this gravity, um, the acceleration due to gravity, is kind of used up by the fact that you need centripetal acceleration for you to be moving in this circle. What it ends up being is um, the centripetal acceleration, as we know from a couple of units ago, is um, rotational velocity times radius. Okay, so what we're really saying is the g, little g that we've been using, the one we know and love and we it's everything great, it's actually the acceleration due to gravity minus the centripetal acceleration or the acceleration due to gravity minus omega squared times r. Now for Earth, for Earth, that ends up being, if you, if you put all the numbers in, that ends up being, let me see, I'll find it. Okay, that ends up being near Earth's surface about 0 0.034 meters per second squared. So this is where our g is coming from. g is, near Earth's surface, is about 9.83 from the acceleration of gravity minus this bit of it that's taken up to accelerate toward the center of the Earth. And that's where we end up getting that g is approximately um, 9.8 or 9.81, okay? Now again, 9.83 is, is kind of an average near the surface of the Earth at sea level, so be careful. But uh, So when we talk about G of things falling or to use to find the weight of things, um, we've been calling this the acceleration due to gravity, but it's not. It's just the acceleration of an object near Earth's surface, which is the acceleration due to gravity minus the acceleration taken up by centripetal acceleration. So, sorry about that weird complication. Most of the time, we kind of ignore all this stuff we just did, and we just say, hey, the acceleration is 9.8. But you should be aware that the acceleration is 9.81, I'll put that on there too, meters per second squared, but it's not all due to gravity.